Good morning and welcome to Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang from Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House, BC, Canada. Happy that you could join me this morning, genuinely. It's the 3rd of February already, 2021. Hard to believe that we're into February. But I'm glad you could join me for devotions this morning. We're continuing our journey through James. And um, today we're into a passage, uh, James chapter 5 verses 13 to 18, and, you know, this passage that we're going to talk about this morning, I I could probably preach, you know, a good two-hour sermon on it, but today I I just think we we, uh, should look at it, and there's a couple of thoughts that have come to mind with it, and I pray that it would encourage you and bless you as we go through this together. So, James writes to the church, and uh, he starts in verse 13 saying this, Is any among you in trouble? Let them pray. Is anyone happy? Let them sing songs of praise. Is any among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. The power of prayer cannot be understated. In the name of Jesus, prayer is powerful and effective when we're in sync with God. Now, God desires us to have a participation with Him in the plans that He has for the world, and He wants us to be engaged with those plans. He wants our hearts to be in step with Him, in sync with Him. And like any other relationship, when we spend time with God, we get closer to Him. And when we're close to God, we receive fresh revelation from the Holy Spirit regarding His good and His perfect will. When we open the Bible, there's a certain anointing. Uh, as we read, the Lord reveals things to us. As, as we spend time meditating on the Scriptures and praying for people, that closeness with God there's, there's a certain unction that comes that we know uh, the will of God. You know, this is, it's really interesting, you know, like the more time you spend with someone, the closer you get to them. And, and God wants us to be close to him. He wants to be close to us. He wants to reveal his heart to us. God is pleased to render assistance to his children and to give them strength when they cry out to him for help. Now, there's different places in the Bible where um, people are given strength. And and God, when we're in trouble, God wants us to call out on Him. It may be that uh, He wants to give us an extra boost of strength to endure hardship as good soldiers of Jesus Christ, right? So it might not just be to change our circumstance. Maybe God, when we pray, gives us strength to endure. It may be, though, that God uh, will see our need to be rescued from uh, a certain particularly distressing circumstance because He knows that we need relief and He has compassion upon us. There are times when we cry out to Him when we're in trouble that He frees us from that circumstance. But nevertheless, regardless of the outcomes when we pray, um, there's a great peace that floods the Spirit when we come to God in prayer. You know, when we're downcast, we're encouraged to cast all of our cares upon Him because He cares for us. But that being said, sometimes we're not troubled. Sometimes we're happy. Being happy is, is great. It's fine. Um, it's not shallow. It's an emotion given to us by God. Being happy, however, is different than joy. Because happiness is an emotion where we experience feelings ranging from contentment to satisfaction to bliss. 
intense pleasure. Those kind of things come with happiness. Whereas joy is a stronger, less common feeling. Um, we experience joy when we achieve selflessness to the point of personal sacrifice. Joy is a deep work of the Holy Spirit as a consistent thing in a believer's life regardless of the circumstance that the believer finds themselves in. But happiness, it's a good thing to enjoy happiness when it comes. We're created that way. And God knows there's going to be times when we have different feelings. Um, when we mourn, uh, when we're angry, when we're happy. You know, those things, uh, sometimes people want to push away from the table of emotion because they don't want to uh, and be embroiled in emotion. But emotion's okay. God made us that way. Um, James suggests that out of a heart of thanksgiving, recognizing the happiness that we experience being a fleeting gift that comes and goes, that a believer, when he's happy, ought to praise the Lord in those moments of bliss for giving us that, that gift, that lighthearted, um, wonderful, jovial gift. And... I find when I'm happy and I do what James says and praise the Lord, praise Jesus, it's like everything's right in the world. Um, being able to sing praises to God is, is, is also a gift. I'm expressing my thanksgiving to him and all, with all that is within me. The privilege of praising the Lord is phenomenal. And um, there is a problem, however, when people use praising the Lord it's kind of like a manipulation tool, you know, uh, like uh, praising God so that he will give us some kind of a gift or a spiritual gift or a special feeling. And, and when we look at praising God this way and when we approach praising God this way, it becomes almost like kind of a, an Eastern religious mantra more than it is about genuine praise. Genuine praise is... Um, is a spontaneous outflow of thanksgiving to God for all that He is and all that He has done. You know, it's it's not like uh, a manipulation tool where the better mood we create, the better melodies we have, the better vocals and instruments, the more professional the sound, the more the Lord will absolutely bless us with a certain feeling or mood. Now, that's not that's not right. That's the wrong view of praise. But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit and we sing praises to God, it's all about Him and not about us. Um, our, our words are focused on glorifying Him, on lifting Him up by, by singing to Him. There's a huge difference in these two approaches. Um, it, it's okay to have feelings when we praise. It's okay to be happy and be joyful and uh, be upbeat. Some people think that if they experience this emotion, it interferes with, uh, it, it somehow dishonors God. No, it doesn't. God made you as an emotional being. So don't be afraid to be happy and sing songs of happiness and praise to God. It's not a, a wrong to experience these things and you're not dishonoring God by allowing your emotions to be uh, excited. Um, this is why James says that if we're happy, we should praise God. Well, as a believer, if we think about all that Jesus is and all that he has done, um, we have plenty of reason to celebrate and praise him. But we don't praise him, I want to emphasize this, we don't praise him for the sake of ourselves. We praise him because he is worthy of our praises and our hearts are filled with thanksgiving, naturally expressing glory to God. 